There we go. We are up. We are Adam. Hello, curling live audience. We got Saturday morning. Some more excellent action from Savile Shootout 2023. We got Brendan Bot. We got Catlin Schneider. Facing off on sheet two. Let everyone get their TV volume adjusted. All that stuff. My name is Rory McCusker. I am a streamer for Curling Stadium Live and lover of all things curling. Nothing better than strapping in for a weekend of action. These two teams are two games in. We'll get some, some stats going for you here. like an open first end when I joined this game for Rock and Stone. Two were in the corner and two were in play. So something had happened off the bat. It may have been a draw into the house as they roll out. Responding with a center guard. The team boxer. Schneider drew around that center guard and throughout the end had a roll camps. One singular center guard and now at Skip Stone's clear house. Looking like a blank up here. So at that point, teams are more or less just trying to find out paths in the ice. Team Botcher investigating the inside out draw to the wing path. As we can see from the polished looks like practices took teams all over the ice. Shouldn't have too many dug in paths. The device looks pretty broken in. Last night we did slow down a little bit in the end. Teams getting caught with uh, light draws. There's a little surprised with how that rock was slowing down, so we'll watch for that this game as well. Skipper's jacket comes off on the first end. Always love, uh, very interesting to see when they lose the jacket or the gloves off. Every club's a little different, every a little different. But just those little ins and outs, that's, that's what's fun about personalities of curling they keep track of their little mannerisms like that atlin schneider's first stone will have a hit to the wing nice soft weight investigate spot mccurry his shooter and started with an intern draw to the wing. He'll now have an intern hit along the forefoot. Just little things to keep track of early in the game. Might want to make the opposing skip throw a shot that they haven't thrown yet. And Catlin's going to have another hit. Right along that same, same path that he just threw. He'll be throwing more weight this time, trying to roll out of the rings. Blank the first end, carry that hammer to the second. Last rock in first and look for a blank here, Captain Schneider. Love this view right down the center line. We get to see how the thrower sees it. Half a rock rolls out. 
that'll do it. It's blank first end here. Saturday morning action at the Seattle Shootout 20. pulling for this generation of Canadians and the next for over 40 years at the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Hey, so dude, I'm just building up my parlay for Sunday. I'm all over the Bucks. And then we got the Panthers, the Bills, and the 49ers, all locks. But it only pays plus 229. So I'm thinking I might need to beef up that number just a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, the Rams are playing on Sunday Night Football. No chance they're losing. Oh my God, dude, you said the same thing last week and you keep losing. <laughs> Don't be this clown betting on NFL parlays this season. The way the Sunday schedule is set up is that you make a parlay for the early games, you miss, and you start chasing in the afternoon games, and then the night game hits and you unload your bankroll trying to play catch up. If you're interested in making smarter decisions on the NFL this season, I'm putting on some free training right now where I give away my top five secrets on how to profit on live sports investing. Welcome back. Looks like a center guard, corner guard paid. Team Botcher will follow their follow their line, put your rock down the center line. Looks like he can just a little peep. Let's look at that. Is it fully behind? It is behind the T line. Big scrub. Pretty good positioning. A little more separation, perhaps, there, but that's, that's a great shot. Brandon does see an opportunity to get across the face, create some inside positioning. Yeah, pretty good opportunity here to create an overlap, protect the stone in the back of the button. Waiting for this one to curl. The whole key to this shot was getting on the other side of the center line. They're not quite able to do that. Angle's looking okay for, for red right now. Still, we're five rocks and four of those rocks are touching the center line. And likely want to change that. Three guard zone is over. So it is a green light to start hitting guard. Hmm. OK, 
Okay, a call that we're seeing more and more in recent years. Roll, a hit and roll. Not only do you get the peel, but you also stacked a spot uh, for yourself along the wing. So what do we call this? We call this a peel and roll? I don't know. Hit and roll. Hit and roll on a center guard. It doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? Looking pretty good. That is more or less what's getting called. It's difficult to make that shot when you're throwing so much weight. It's just kind of an irregular spot where you're trying to manage a roll. It's, not it's just not happening as often. So you want to throw enough weight to get rid of that center guard. And therefore, the roll gets harder. Brendan choosing to get rid of this corner guard. That's the end. Update the scoreboard there. It is the second end. It was a. Very much weight thrown at that shot. I wonder what kind of role or what kind of action Brendan and Brent Mark there were trying, trying to get from that stone. Very interesting. Team Schneider sees a rock in front of the ring. They're going to use it. That long, or I should say, very wide corner guard. Put a stone into the 12 foot here. Knowing that the center line rock will be addressed at some point. This is an indication that we will not have a blank end. <clears throat> Team Schneider could have the opportunity to address those balls. Well. Could have thrown a hit, trying to get rid of three balls. Opting to raise the stakes a little bit. You know that that's coming later. We'll try to tempt a miss with the box along the wing. That. So we enter third stone, Mark Kennedy. Back. with the intern. This is a bomb. No sweeping necessary. Wow, look at that roll. Almost gets it to pedal into the button area, but kind of chips off, rolls away. A lot of momentum in that storm. <clears throat> a lot of rotation. Taking that thing all the way to the side of the rings. And with four rocks remaining, Captain used to, I don't know, likes to explore the house with the room. Learning about Cattle Shatter as a skip. He wants to kind of show his team all off, sort of uh, illustrate the thing that he's considering. <laughs> Makes it hard for commentators like to understand the first come, but that's A okay. So it looks like it is a draw. We'll try to use that stone of Mark Kennedy's the freeze opportunity. Waiting for this one to curl. Sweepers have not touched it. Here we go. Now they're pushed that thing over. That looks okay. It's not a frozen stone, but that creates difficulty in getting rid of this one. You'd almost think there's two options here. Botch can try to get out of it and stick both of his rocks in the boat. Or you could try to lose the one in the back. Almost double these stones off. That'll give Team nothing to reason to. But I think Brandon has asked to spare the yellow but instead keeping both the rock. We'll find out with the
Yeah, perfectly executed. Yellow stones, the side of the ball, but not much to freeze to there. You could probably try a corner freeze, but you'd never make it good enough that your, your stone would not be able to be removed in the following shot. Three more opportunities matter with hammer to happen. Catlin's still looking at creating a situation on the wing. We might now be looking at a trip. And here we go. The shot we've been waiting for all in. And it's Team Schneider going to come and have to go here. It's a great now. The curl. It's the top yellow. Big roll. Pretty good positioning on the wall. Those stones might be close together, close enough, but there's a double back for Team Botcher. Team Schneider hoping to hit that rock just a little thicker, keep their shooter a little higher, create that dead even parallel placement. Try to take away this double. They just need a half rock to be deep. That is an open, open double opportunity for Brandon Botcher. Got to think about it. Back to This will be Brandon Bosch's first throne of the second end. Opting to change his call. Didn't like what he saw with the double. Take the easier stone. Beat Mark Kennedy's shots. And he creates even more separation. Nothing to freeze to there for the fighter. I suppose you could play a little half about rock, but it could quite easily be removed by Tim Bodger. Catlin trying all and it happen on the wings. And some made shot. Just haven't quite got that situation, that dead frozen situation or dead buried situation they used before.
So after an open first, he's kind of playing ball in the second. <laughs> Not a ton of guard. We saw the hit and roll on center guard earlier from China. They rolled just a little too far. And then we saw a a play on, on the on the wing, the, the corner guards by Team Block. So I'm trying to figure out Frank Lant throwing a softer weight, get some kind of roll to switch sides from the to curl sweep. Yeah, very interesting call there. And this is a good time to chime in. Um, my viewers on YouTube, here, get that chat going. I love to to interact. And interact with other people down and I'm back on the curling rock. Does save both red and the rings. Set up pretty easy double. That was a delicate shot. You're really hoping to get your own red rock off the side to make a more difficult double. But if you, if you miss your mark by just a little bit, you're damaging the stone or not moving red at all. That's kind of what we saw. That actually didn't move very much. It was a difficult ball. But it was the only one that Catlin could make separation between the two. So this is going to be a fine double. It's pretty early in the year. So anything can happen. Launches this one. Launches this one. One and two. Two red rocks gone. Three yellows remain in the rings. And Hodgkin's not knowing his job is done. It will be a shot for one. Open hit for Captain Snyder. Blanks the first end. It is forced in the second end. Throwing a soft weight, making sure his round confidence. Open call. Nice easy sweep, right on the nose. That'll be a score of one. Team Schneider ahead one point. That's hammer. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Stronger agronomics, better returns, greater peace of mind from pre-seed to post-harvest. You can count on the Victory Canola program to keep you and your farm ahead of the curve. Grow with us at VictoryCanola.com.
sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. And there we go. Got some microphones work. Third end. Kimbacha with him. Two center guards thrown by Team Schneider. A corner guard and a draw around thrown by Team Bacha. Should be an interesting end. Looks like there'll be lots of rocks in play. This is Brett Glantz's first stone. Looking to get some inside positioning. Very similar to the first end. And, and just like Brent's, uh, or sorry, that was the second end, just like Brent's shot in the second end, he's not quite curl enough. Touch light as well. Not going to get that kind of tap tap inside positioning that they were looking for. Team Schneider has successfully kind of shrunk the scoring area at this point. They've drawn play to the middle. They've, they've kind of shrunk the available scoring area that, that Red Rock of theirs is inaccessible at this point. So Team Botcher wants to score multiple. They're, they're going to have to either clean up the middle or, or do it inside of the 8 foot. Callum was debating taking that corner guard, but with the red stone and the eight foot, you've you've almost shrunk the scoring area to the point where well, Team Botcher's not really going to be able to use that corner guard. The stagger of the center in the corner as well is going to not allow an in-turn drop half, I think. It'd be pretty skinny if it was. So, they're going to lob another one four foot here. Why not? Is that the situation they're looking for? Time to capitalize. Second, Jason Ginter. Schneider teams, Alex Horvath at lead, Sterling Middleton throwing third stone. This one sails a little deep, but it's good enough for shot rock, so I, I know people are really finicky with that, that T-line. Oh, if the draw's behind the T-line, it's no good. Yes, it does open up an opportunity for the your opponent to draw on top of it and use it as backing and such, but First, they have to make that shot. And in the meantime, you are uh, occupying the shot stone. So if anything, it does force your opponent's hand, forces your opponent to address it, to correct that situation, use the stone to, to follow follow down. And if they don't make it, if they don't drop the rock, then that stone is, is as good as it, it can be. It's occupying the, the shot stone, you can protect it, and try to steal with that stone. A lot of rocks to come before that. That happens, though. 
Brent Glantz, second stone. Lineup for Team Botcher. It's their standard lineup. Ben Hebert at first. Lead. Brent Glantz throwing second stones. Mark Kennedy at third. And Skip Brendan Botcher delivering seven and eight stones at each end. Waiting for this one to curl again. Mark trying to get that stone over. Does chip off. Not exactly what, what they were looking for. Brent Glant gets, gets the right weight, but that stone still just wasn't able to curl enough. Could have been a little heavy, I suppose. Four rocks thrown for both teams, and every single one of them is in play. That decision has been made. It's another one to the middle. This end is turning out pretty well for, for Team Schneider. I know that Botcher is lying to right now, but this is the exact type of overlapped mess that a team without hammer relies on. Not a lot of ways to run rocks back and correct things for Team Botcher, so the stakes are high this end. Sterling's first home. Line looks really good. Sweepers do hold the line. And it's good enough for shot stone. Unremovable stone. In the back of the forefoot. That scoring area just keeps getting smaller and smaller for Team Launcher. Kennedy's first stone. He's got a long way to curl. And there, there it goes. Catch it. it does curl enough. Shot rock doesn't want to leave the face open. The smaller and smaller that scoring area gets. Another draw coming here. This one's definitely tighter. Sweeper's going to have to hold this. And that's going to crash the front. Don't know if it was super light, but that definitely started on a, on a more inside path than his first rock. Sweepers and Skipper knew it right away. We have to go on that one. Not a, uh, not a disaster result. Botcher is going to have an opportunity to occupy that, that zone now. Full knows that rock showing. You could roll either way if you wanted to. Botcher's still concerned, though, that with place drawn so closely to the forefoot and so many overlaps and, and guards out front, it's the, the one rock away from allowing stealer of force. It's going to be a tough tough look to score two here. Brett coming down. Having a discussion. We've seen that more and more as this team kind of forms its identity. Brett 
getting a little more of that, well, no, a lot more of that, on Team Bocce than he, he ever did on, on Team Gushu. Brett, a former skip himself. Sort of progressing as a player into this role, get more involved in the house. It's good to see. Oh, but now Mark wants to turn. <laughs> It's a it's a complex act. Look at the corners in the back of the back of the sheet. There are no rocks that have been removed yet this end. Pretty incredible. be a team discussion here I don't blame them not a lot of right answers they're looking at removing that stone of Sterling Middleton's but does that really give them that much I mean it's it's promotable but team Botch or team Schneider could easily guard that or make another attempt into the rings or into the forefoot both teams have kind of locked themselves away from the button at this point Pretty successful end for Team Schneider, you would think. No one really made that perfect draw to the forefoot, but Team Schneider did coax play down the center line. They created overlapping guards, overlapping uh, draws and scenarios. Ooh. I don't think it was that far over that. Going to the instant replay. <laughs> yeah, guard's fine. That's exactly where it was. Mark Kennedy. A lot of discussion, understandable, but they are throwing a hit on this uh, Sterling Middleton stone. They are sending it into the pile, trying to make something happen. Or it's, it's curling that much. Very swingy spot. That rock stayed on the high side for a long time. Really snapped over at the end. We got some even more overlapped craziness. I wonder if they left a, a double red yellow for Team Schneider. That stone of Mark Kennedy's is not promotable. The angles are not there. You would not be able to tap that back. Forefoot still very locked away on both teams. No clear way in there. Like we did fix that audio issue, but now I do not have a mute button, so <laughs> you have to hang on for my sneezes and, and coughs and such. Commentating without a mute button is scary stuff, but not as scary as this. How is that Catlin is growing into here? Oh, 
not exactly sure what to call it. Team Schneider might be afraid of a corner guard run back that Botcher has on that, that wing. Might be enough to spill the red. Score three or four. Definitely there to, to promote for two. So that's the, the shot they're defending against. Looks like it'll be a, a draw guard combo. Trying to take away that run back. And we can see the center line. That rock is curling so much already. Wow. Ah, just a high guard taking away the, run, the straight run back. And I think it does just that. It makes it more difficult anyway. You'd have to go red-yellow. Still have three rocks to come this end. This feels like sort of the, the uh, dying shots at the end. No one really able to, to take action. Change the forefoot scenario in their favor. Team Botcher's got two rocks left, and I'm, I'm not even sure what they're going to do with them. Now, the, the Schneider Stone at the back of the forefoot's only got about a quarter of the forefoot, so if, if you were to make a draw to the edge of the four, it looks like there's about two feet of room where you could score two points that way. On the intern side, no one's no one's been quite that far out. It'd be a difficult uh, draw. It'd be a, a guess a little bit on the, the weight. The sweepers would have to really attend to that stone. But it is there. So there's a shot for two on the board right now. Both these teams come into this game with a 2-0 and record. Team Botcher starting the event versus Whip from Alberta. Won that game 7-2. Then it was Libus, Libus from Alberta. Won that game 7-1. So Team Botcher cruising so far. Team Schneider starting their tournament. It's Team Webb from Alberta. Winning that game 9-3. And then it was a 12 to 6 win against the Whip. So, undefeated teams going at it here at the Savile Shootout. Very complex third end. Crazy house. Only one rock sits in the corner. Brendan Botcher's first stone, third end. Trying to rearrange things, set something up for his next stone. It's like an outturned tap. Chips off the top, rearranges things a little bit. I don't think they got what they wanted out of that one. Still no clear way to promote those stones. Corner guard run back, but now need to contact three rocks in, in the right spot. Just getting a little specific for, for an easy two. I wonder if Team Schneider wouldn't be better off just occupying that intern draw path to the edge of the forefoot. I, th I think that's still there for Team Botcher. They could score two by catching a piece of the forefoot right, line, right where Cal um, is. They're still worried about a turn, though. I don't think blowing that up does much for them. They could be looking at a tap 
maybe Botcher plays the other red yellow tap and down the center line there. Maybe the, the last yellow storm spins into the forefoot. You may think that's the, in, the injured draw. The injured draw is very difficult. No doubt about that. Schneider's last rock without hammer, leading by one in the third end. Trying to defend a two. No real way into the forefoot to, to lie one, so he's trying to take away any opportunity for two. Looks like he'll try to rearrange this, this center line. It's either coming up light or over curled on a guard. I'm not sure what the call was, so I can't say that's a miss yet, but I doubt that's where they wanted that stone. Don't think that changed anything. Not going to find a lot of head-to-head -head records or history between these teams with Catlin just moving into the skip position at the uh, at the top tier level for the first time. Catlin, no stranger to skipping the game. But a new venture for Team Schneider. This will be the last rock. Third end. And after all that, it will be the intern draw that has been there for quite a few shots in a row, just saving it to the very end. This will take a smart sweep to make sure this rock curls at the right time. Wow, incredible movement. How much did that curl? Really good sweep, hitting it through the the uh, getting it through the rough stuff, through the weeds. Curls in for two points. Team Botcher leading two to two to one. Shutter will have a chance to respond in the fourth inning. Western Sales with our business is the people. I'm sure that there's a hundred years experience coming out of that shop. We trust them because we do a CMI on our uh, on our combine, on our tractor. When our equipment comes out of Western Sales, it's going to be good because if it's not, they send us another combine, they send us another tractor. And we're not naive to the fact that that probably costs them a lot of money. So we just know that the service that we're getting at Western Sales is above par to everybody else. Hey, so dude, I'm just building up my parlay for Sunday. I'm all over the Bucks. And then we got the Panthers, the Bills, and the 49ers, all locks. But it only pays plus 229. So I'm thinking I might need to beef up that number just a little bit. <laughs> Hold on, the Rams are playing on Sunday Night Football. No chance they're losing. Oh my God, dude, you said the same thing last week and you keep losing. <laughs> Don't be this clown betting on NFL parlays this season. 
the way the Sunday schedule is set up is that you make a parlay for the early games, you miss, and you start chasing in the afternoon games, and then the night game hits and you unload your bankroll trying to play catch up. If you're interested in making smarter decisions on the NFL this season, I'm putting on some free training right now where I give away my top five secrets on how to profit on live sports investing. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back. Fourth end. Really interesting third end. Every single rock and play until the end of the third stones. Even by the end there, there was only one rock removed, only one rock in the corner. So 15 rocks in play. Gotta love it. Both teams kind of locking themselves out of taking much action. Team Botcher knew they had a, a difficult inter the whole end. Finally made it. Really interesting way that things shook down there. Now we've got... Always interesting to me how these ends build. Lead stones. Lead stones. Never been more interesting in curling's history as they are in 2023. No tick rule. Five rock, five rock rule. Allows for some very interesting starts at each end. And here we go. We have four made shots. In a row. Not perfectly made shots, perhaps. That one does come a little deep. But got a center guard, a corner guard. Draw around center, draw around corner. Both teams just setting up their own their own strategy, their own tactics, ignoring what the other's doing for now. Nice sweep there, comes up just a, a bit short. In my eye, that may be where they wanted that rock. I, I never want to call it a miss because these guys are these guys are at the forefront of curling strategy, curling tactics. It's more often than not, you think that they missed by a few feet, but that's exactly where they wanted it a lot of the time. So I always struggle with, I always, I'm always hesitant to say that it wasn't in the right spot. Probably the hardest part about doing stats is understanding where the team wanted the rock, not letting your own bias about where you think the rock should have been affect your grade in the shot. That's why when you're always watching those curling percentages, those statistics, I think most of us figured this out by now, but you're not all 100% what you see on TV. This is a very difficult job, grading uh, great shots. What's not difficult is accurate track of how many rocks been thrown. Hey folks, a little behind there. This is the third rock on down the ice for Team, team Schneider. Wow, look at that curl. They played the card pretty tight. That's just incredible movement in the ice. If you're able to get across the thick and tap that rock out of the rings, wow. Well managed to win. You can see Sterling Middleton. A big, uh, big grin on his face as he knows that they, they played that as tight to the guard as they possibly could have. Kind of incredible how they remove that stone and still roll in with that weight. So, it'll be a run back. We're at second rock here in the fourth end. Team Schneider down one point with Hammer. They've got a corner guard. They've got a rock in the wing. And they've got a rock in the top of the forefoot buried. So things are looking pretty good for Team Schneider right now. Not a great sign when you're running back center guards as a team without hammer. A lot of a lot of uh, emphasis on this shot. Got to make this one right. Big sweep from Benny Heaves. Make sure that rock stays straight. Almost overcooked it a bit. 
really key in that shot, keeping your shooter right down the center line. And they were able, Team Botch was able to do that. So it's a made shot, but not perfect. The yellow rock, the promoted stone, sticking out more than enough. More than enough for a, a hit and roll attempt here. For the second rock throw, Jason Gint there. Predicting a lot of curl in this on it, and they're going to give up. That's all right. Chipping off the center guards, not a bad thing. Just got to think he missed that light. That's an acceptable miss, however. You got rid of the center guard. You rolled for a, a corner. Not just a corner, an uh, eight-foot guard. So if you're able to draw around that, thing, you're, you're going to be able to out count the botcher stone on the side of the but Team Schneider's got a long use of that. Team Botcher line two. Kind of flipping this end around. A made run back. Hit and roll. Now Team Botcher's got it up. Solidify their own. Center line. Uh, four foot still be accessible for Team Shooter, but the hopes of scoring two along the way is kind of dwindling here. We enter third stones. Big wait. Gets one. Gets two. Almost catches. Uh, almost catches three botcher stones there. I, I don't even know how that was possible. But doesn't. Jams into his own. Makes the initial run back though. That's a that's a neat shot. Sterling Middleton. Kennedy's final stone. A lot of movement in this ice. Just we're seeing it on both sides, in turn and out turn. Not a lot of sweeping, lets that one settle in, top of the button. Just a touch deep. You saw the sweepers not wanting to give that one much help.
Now, I wonder if it's a freeze attempt here. They will try to tap it back. Alan's room is just right on, on the nose. There's lots of sweeping help to get there regardless. This is going to come up light. Good enough for second shot. Not very promotable. Not the precision that Team Schneider was looking for. You'd be hoping to keep those rocks right close to each other so on a, on a future shot that redstone would, would stick right where it is as you throw some weight at it. Now if you throw weight, everything's probably going. It's going to be enough of a stagger that Team Botcher is considering just guarding things the way they are right now, and I don't blame them. Short run back attempt from the, the corner guard on the shooter's left hand side. Thinking about putting another rock in the rings there. That would help defend against the run back. At least have two stones. Very interesting. Choosing to address this redstone at the top of the rings. Probably hoping to jam their shooter against their, their own rock and the, the wings. Looking to lie to at the end of the shot. Lots of weight. Hoping to save the rock on the top. Big sweep. Thin enough. Does not save their stone, but gets rid of everything. Jams and remains open. Touch confused by that call. It, I, I, it makes more sense if they were trying to keep their, their one on the button. But even then, if they, if they got that top red thinner, they'd be losing both stones along the wing. Safe call. It's a risk. It's a risk adverse call. Getting rid of the the Schneider stone. You know, it helps it helps defend against the big end, I suppose. But now it's going to be a pretty good opportunity to roll behind cover for Catlin. I feel like the chances of scoring two did not did not go down very much. the end of that call. Let me know in the YouTube chat what you think the plan was there. We've got 365 people watching. Friends and family of the team, I'm sure. Supporters of each team. And just like me, curling fans in general. So welcome, welcome everyone. To the Savile Shootout 2023. This is Catlin's first stone. That rock a little early. It's like a roll behind the center card. Four foot roll. Let's see how we can make this. Bit of an over roll. That's okay. Still a tough shot. Still a tough one to get to. Land Catlin Schneider trading, trading a few chirps coming down the ice. Look, they got big grins on everyone's face. Now they're having fun. Why not? It was September and we got competitive curling. The season is on. Local. Curling season keeps growing and growing. With this live stream technology and, and the supporters of Curling Stadium, supporters of the Savile Center, the teams, the event, generous sponsors, we have. 
dozen curling games to watch at one time. We got the Stu Stellas Tankard in, in Oakville. Savile Shootout, 2023 men's and women's events. We've got as much curling as you can ever dream of watching. Brennan's last shot in the fourth end. Soft weight hit. They're going to stick around, make a blank attempt. Difficult. Schneider. And they will roll open. More than enough room. Launch one through that hole, roll out to the outside, the left side of the rings. This is the last rock, fourth end. Blank attempt for Dean Schneider. Floats that one a little bit. No speakers on it yet. Nah, it makes it through the port. Hits and rolls out. That's a successful blank. Team Schneider will take the hammer into the fourth end. Remains two to one for Team Boxer. More action when we come back. Stronger agronomics, better returns, greater peace of mind from pre-seed to post-harvest. You can count on the Victory Canola program to keep you and your farm ahead of the curve. Grow with us at VictoryCanola.com. The reason we trust Western Sales with our business is the people. I'm sure that there's 100 years experience coming out of that shop. We trust them because we do a CMI on our, uh, on our combine, on our tractor. When our equipment comes out of Western Sales, it's going to be good because if it's not, they send us another combine, they send us another tractor. And we're not naive to the fact that that probably costs them a lot of money. So we just know that the service that we're getting at Western Sales is above par to everybody else. pulling for this generation of Canadians and the next for over 40 years at the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts. Well, some fourth end break action happening. I always like to keep track of this. Most of the time they don't take a break, but the, the culture at the Savile Center, the Savile Shootout 2023, teams have been taking a little bit of a five. And this is me and my mother's favorite game. What snacks did they bring out? You can tell a lot about a team's identity by what, what fourth end break snacks they indulge in. Looks like everyone's left the ice for a little break. So we will as well. Let's play, let's pay some more homage to our sponsors. Makes all this live curling action possible. Please do support those who support curling. Curling owes a lot to sponsors, so we'll take a little break ourselves. pulling for this generation of Canadians and the next for over 40 years at the Scotty's Tournament of Hearts.
Do you ever miss your parlays by just one pick? How about losing your over or unders or your spreads by only a point? Well, if you're ready to ditch the gambling and go legit, it's time to join In Play Live. We're the world's number one live sports investing platform, all built around our live video stream. So you can wager in real time with our seven figure professionals and take what they're taking when they're taking it. Now the platform also includes our master class suite of videos that include both the strategies and philosophies to succeed. Our next rocket ship is launching off to space right now. And you're just one click away from being on your first live stream with our team of pros. So make the transformation today. Go from amateur gambler to sports value analyst. We'll see you on the moon. Welcome back, fifth end, Team Schneider with Hammer. Center guard not quite on the center line. That means if there's a miss here, play a plan B for a tick. Not that we've seen that much a tick shot at all. No tick rule seems to have pretty effectively <laughs> eliminated that from the game. Will be a draw around the center guard for Tim Schneider. Lead rock thrower Alex Horvath. Leeds having quite a solid game so far. I always love to see how the first four rocks to the end shape out. Not a lot of misses from either lead. Ben Hebert responding. Sweeper's getting a lot of curl out of that stone. Let's get a little closer look there. Yeah, they are frozen. Corner freeze, not a lot on either side. It's a great shot, Ben Hebert. Alex will try to tap things just a little bit. Oh, no, Catlin's broom indicating top of the 12 foot. Get some movement out of this thing. Gets the angles they were looking for, I believe. That's right where Catlin's room was, top of the 12. So four made shots. Both leads continuing a strong game. When leads are playing well, ends end up being very interesting. Schneider kind of accepting the center line center line set up here putting both their stones down the center line not throwing a corner guard here in the fifth end Coming up very light there. Brett has missed light on his first throw, his number three rock, if that's what he's throwing. Quite a few ends so far. Wonder what's going on with that. He might just be throwing them a little bit, but there's a chance that rock is much slower than, than his other one.
Yeah, the temptation is too great. Those rocks are very double peelable. Catelyn looked like he had a plan on making something happen down the middle, but just could not resist double peeling these these yellow guards. So close together. I want to take this opportunity while it presents itself. Ooh, floated this one out pretty wide. But it's still enough to make the action happen. And it will spill into the rings, not I might might to make it troublesome to try and block this end. If those if all three of those stones, the three being the, the two center guards and shooting, if all of those were able to roll out a pretty good look at creating a blank at this end. Those rocks down the center line are primed to explode. You can hit that top red one anywhere on the high side, really, and all three of those things are, are leaving the rings. So, bit of an opportunity missed to keep the close stone out of the rings, blank alive. It's going to change things for Brendan as well. Brett and Brendan are going to have another kind of discussion here. We've seen this a few times this game. Brett being relied on for strategical and tactical advice. Mark Kennedy, of course, very experienced. Benny Heaps probably got something to say as well, but he'll just leave the three to things stick in the water. Probably a good idea. Sometimes. Too many voices in the battle. Wait from Brett. Chips the top one, leaves the overlap rock down the middle. Some risk adverse curling here from Team Bosher. We've seen it a couple times this game. Options to get a grab, options to jump things up. Instead, taking the option, taking the safer option or risk adverse option. Nothing wrong with that. Up one point in the fifth end. A force would be really nice, but you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to force a force. If, if the situation is not there, no need to get really aggressive in trying to make that force happen. Shows how big that, that stone that spun in is. Looks like uh, Team Schneider's going to have to waste a rock addressing that thing on the outside. See if they can't get a nice little roll here. It's one. Creates some separation. Ooh. Very interesting angles. Nice hit and roll there, Jason Ginter. will be Mark Kennedy's first stone of the fifth end. Interesting to see what kind of weight they play. Okay, full hit weight. Big hit weight. Trying to sneak by the top. They get one, they get two. Beautiful double, brave double attempt. That is a big shot. Pretty brave call as well. If, if Mark is inside and chips off his own yellow at all, you're leaving two Schneider stones in the rings with Team Schneider uh, throwing a third one in there very likely. And that's a big flip for this end. It'll be tough to blank too. Team Schneider will try to group stones, try to hit and roll as far over. side of the stone. Roll the opposite way they intended. Oh, 
a little slow on the rocks there. Sorry, folks. This is Mark Kennedy's second stone. Sweep the whole way down to this rock on the highest level. It's not as much of a roll as they were hoping for, but it's the job done. Not enough angle now. Could get rid of both of these yellow stones in one, one go. I wonder if it's all. Could be a big double attempt here for Stanley Middleton. Keep the blank alive. So wait for a double. One rock. Big roll. That one's sweeping. It does catch the second one. Did the yellow leaf rings. Ah, oh, the body language. Let's get a closer look here. Ooh. Tough to tell from here. I thought I saw a bit of a disappointed Alex Horvath. Sometimes the body language is more of an indication than what we can actually see with the camera. You gotta remember the camera's right over the pin, creating a bit of an angle. You can see underneath the rock as it bites the 12 foot. So we'll, we'll always see from our angle a little more white than you would see from uh, on top of the rock. We're, we're used to Vic Router telling us that over and over again. <laughs> I think we all get it. At this point, will be a freeze, a drop. Just trying to use anything as much as I can. Create a jam opportunity. Blank is looking like attempt looking quite likely at this point. And it will not, will not reach the rings. Now, Shiner's Call will tell us if that rock is moving right now. It's like it is not. Either way, using what's could attempt to, to peel that rock, attempt, even if that, that yellow was in the ring, to kind of, uh, run back. But Team Schneider is kind of accepting that we got a little bit of an opportunity here for Skipper's News. Let's take it. So it will be a draw around the wing, trying to get fully buried. And in an absolute perfect scenario, a bit of a quarter freeze on that cat stone. Catlin taking this opportunity. Try and set up two points in the fifth there. This is Catlin Schneider's first one. And I'm wrong one. It's an open draw. Scrap everything at this point. <laughs> This will force Brennan to chase it on the outside, leaving the stone wide open for this blank attempt. Brennan Botcher's fifth end, Just trying to make a red rock away, keep the stone in the rings, force to throw the blank attempt. This was the plan ever since the red stones and Team Botcher made a decision. No, we're going to clear out the red. Wow, this is curling a lot. I think it's gone. Either down wage or it's not enough of an extension, but that started curling right away. Brock could have picked something up. You see the sweepers, the, uh, the center line. 
There's a chance that a little bit. And just like that, open draw for Team Schneider. First big miss of the game for Ben Botcher. There it is, last block in the fifth end. Taking the same path. Catlin Schneider getting some good practice with his draw weight. Two T line draws in a row. Score a two for Team Schneider. They take the lead. Headed into the sixth end. Team Botcher will have hammer. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium. Do you ever miss your parlays by just one pick? How about losing your over, unders, or your spreads by only a point? Well, if you're ready to ditch the gambling and go legit, it's time to join In Play Live. We're the world's number one live sports investing platform, all built around our live video streaming. So you can wager in real time with our seven figure professionals and take what they're taking when they're taking it. Now the platform also includes our master class suite of videos that include both the strategies and philosophies to succeed. Our next rocket ship is launching off to space right now. And you're just one click away from being on your first live stream with our team of pros. So make the transformation today. Go from amateur gambler to sports value analyst. We'll see you on the moon. Welcome back. It is the sixth end of Botcher with Hammer. Two center guards for not positive if that was the missed, so it came up light, or if that was the intention. I'm gonna assume that was the intention of both leads. And Hebert's second stone. Looking to place one. Four foot, top of the eight foot. Just waiting for the curl. And it will. Sweeper switch sides. Drag that to where it needs to go. Top four. Looks like a center line setup. Second rock thrower, Jason Pinter. Oh, 
Also waiting for this girl. It does. Get that corner freeze. They're looking for a little more action on that stone. It is going to be... Yeah, it does leave some room. Not quite what they were looking for. It's going to allow Team Boxer to throw a touch more weight. All right, let's keep an eye on this stone of Brett Glad. It's come up, it's come up light, pretty light, uh, more than a few times this game. So. See what happens here. There is a chance that he gave the rock to Ben Heber, but... Sweepers like it. We're harder on it now. They get the angle, they get the tap, they get a roll behind the center line. That's a great shot. Frank Galant, Galant making it happen. Here we go, 389 viewers, hello. For those just tuning in, Travel Shootout 2023. Oh, we'll do a little bit of a game story here. Minor, successful blanking the first end. Team Botcher throwing their first rock in the rings and after a hit and roll out, a blank the board. After that, Team Schneider in the second end, makes it happen along the wings. Team Botcher answered at every call, first to one. Second end. Third end. Extremely messy end. Extremely interesting end. All you coaches and young students out there, I, I would go back and watch that third end if I were you. Just a very interesting way of, of both teams keeping all their rocks in play. A little tap and roll off. Team Schneider, that's not what they were looking for. Oh, their, their rock right off the full foot line. Botcher scores two in the and third, fourth end. Ended up being uh, a little more open. Still playing around the center guard. Ended up being another blank. Team Schneider, lots of guards in play, but needed a perfect roll. Brendan overrolling on his last one gives Catlin Schneider an opportunity to blank again. Fifth end, and we just came out of a deuce out of nowhere. Looking up blank was cooking up. Team Botcher not very specific. I missed a few draws. Missed a hit and roll. Not a perfect end for Team Shot, but a pure flash from Adam His last stone opens the door for a wide open draw to Team Shotter takes the lead. Here we are in the sixth end. Botcher with the hammer. Every rock in place so far. And a big opportunity for Team Botcher. Was not specific enough. Chip the top stone, rolls over to the side of the forefoot. And now, back to the an opportunity to lie three. Undercover. Soft weight hit goal is the call. Mark Kennedy. The shot is a little down. Looks pretty close. Trying to poke some curl out of this. It'll make contact. It will roll towards the center. That's a good shot. I don't think they're lying. It doesn't matter too much. Yellow with with commanding position at the top of the forefoot. Lots of rocks to come. Two center guards. Niner still. Meaning all it's going to take is one good shot. Well, at this point, they'll need two to crack in there. But if Team Shutter is able to flip this end around, they'll, they'll have a good force opportunity with those overlaps of cards, neither of which directly run back up. Oh, that last drop has been killing me all game. <laughs> it's early season for the broadcasters as well, keep in mind. Thank you for joining me. Morning has become afternoon here on in time. I'm streaming out of Regina, Saskatchewan. This team's playing Edmonton, Alberta. We've also got the Stew Cells Oakville event in Ontario. 
got curling in, in two time zones. Men's and women's events. Get ready, curling fans. Every weekend, you're going to have something to watch here on Curling Stadium. More curling than ever before. Future is awesome. Hmm, it's that one high side. Can't imagine that's exactly what they were going for. Did roll behind the corner guard. There are two Schneider stones kind of shrinking the scoring area at the moment. I think it's shot stone Schneider. Looks like lead. Neither team too concerned with who's lying what right now. It's all about positioning in the front of the house. And Team Botcher has it. Undoubtedly. Team Schneider not in trouble yet, but definitely losing the battle, losing the positioning battle at the top of the house. Another beautiful shot. Brent Gallant, two in a row. Really good end. And now Mark Kennedy contributed to the setup. Three yellow stones, all of them very difficult to remove. Angles are kind of very botched here. Keith Schneider's going to have to put some rocks into that mix. And they're going to have to do it right now. Running out of time. They're to compete in the top of the four foot. Toughest look of the game so far for Team Schneider. It's going to take two shots to, to rearrange things in order to get a, a Schneider stone in a good spot. So with only three rocks remaining in the end, not a lot of room for misses. Catlin's going to ask Sterling Middleton to make a little tap on the intern side. Signaling back 12 weight. We have seen rocks absolutely take off down this four foot line. Lots of curl. Earlier in the game in the fourth end, Sterling Middleton had a, or actually I think it was the second after Jason McGinter, had a back line weight tap back that, that over curled the nose of it buried rock we saw some really really significant movement so the shot is definitely possible the idea here is to get as close to nose as possible leave the redstone in a jamming position against the yellows nothing else will do this one's got to be got to be locked in early sweep try to keep this thing straight sweepers on it the whole way and there's that curl there's that snap on the four foot line I do not think they saved it. They did not. That rock is gonna over curl. It's gonna chip and roll. A somewhat useful position. That that creates some kind of angle, but geez, Team Schneider kind of running out of lives here. Yep, that's pretty juicy. Uh <laughs> Brennan just showed you with his broom what happens. There's a, a a thick hit and roll. That is Mark Kennedy's specialty. Could very easily see the botcher lying four rocks behind cover at the end of this shot. Huge opportunity here. Big spike in viewers, 489 people in this watch party. Welcome, new viewers. We've had an incredible game. Team Schneider scoring a deuce in the fifth end after a flashed hit. Team Botcher by Brandon Botcher's last rock. We, we all thought it was going to be a blank. But nope. Deuce for Schneider, and now Team Botcher's come out slinging here in the sixth inning. Have not missed much. Team Schneider got us out there looking for two center guards, overlapped, hoping to make a free tap, but just 
little misses here and there up the middle of the lineup. Some, some tick and rolls, some some heavy some heavy weight, just opening the door over and over again for Team Roger to solidify that position at the top of the forefoot. Now, Team Schneider staring down a very scary situation. With Mark Kennedy throwing his last stone. Looks like they're choosing to ignore the redstone. There was some discussion about playing a bit of like a hit and roll in off type of shot. No, nope, this leaks like room for a draw. Very interesting. I don't think they want to shake up the angles too much. Right now, Team Schneider doesn't have much off. If, they were, if Team Schneider was playing in and off on their own rock or in the, in the eight foot, I don't know how much damage they could do. This is ice for a pure draw. Sweep call will tell us what kind of tap they're looking for. Sweepers are not touching this one. Brett, the outside sweeper, trying to get some movement out of this thing. Room is in the, the cut position. Trying to get movement. Just a little heavy. Things still looking good for Team Botch, but that's not what was desired. That, that rock rolled off. There is going to be a double opportunity. And there's going to be room to roll. So I, I think we got to call that a miss for Mark. Leaving the door open a little bit. They would have loved to be inside position, not showing any type of hit and roll. Mark Stone stops a little earlier and gets a little more curl. I don't think this shot is possible for Catlin. Dropping the jacket. Catlin Schneider, he knows it's a big moment. Chance to, to bail out his all-important sixth end. Trying to hold on to this one-point lead. We'll need a couple big shots just to score down to two or three. Or the opportunity to score down to two or three. Looking to make two rocks fly. Roll his shooter into a better position. Atlas Schneider's first rock. Big weight. Hold this on the other side of the center line. Last one guard will rack on the second center guard. This game of inches here. Team Schneider not missing by much, but missing by just enough to keep Team Botcher in control. Jeez, now this, this is not hopeless yet, but looking very scary for Team Schneider. I think Team Botcher is only lying two rocks right now. Might be worth considering removing the Schneider Stone lie five on this last one. Force Catlin to throw something really specific. Just a big mess in the front of the forefoot. Totally grouped. Covered Botcher Stones. Now, Callum will have a crack at that same double. But at that point, are you going to be looking at even a three or four, even, even still? Well, it'll like be a game saving shot for Callum Schneider. But for now, looks like Team Botcher is going to play some soft weight. Looks like they are going to remove that red stone, take an opportunity to lie five. Brennan Botcher trying to shut the door on Team Schneider in the sixth end, his first rock. Really trying to make this one curl. I think they're trying to, 
Bach was trying to flop a little bit towards the center line, but that's a fine shot. Catlin investigating, how, how can I cut these guys down? Put a rock right here. Well, they only have a draw for three. Giving up three at this point would be a victory for Team Snyder. Just trying to stay in the game here at this point. You tactically missed quite a few trades in a row. Our viewers keep going up and up. 530 watching now. That tells me a few games have ended early. Maybe in Oakville, maybe in the Saddle Center here, but welcome new viewers. Pretty interesting game. A mix of very, uh, very messy flex ends and open ends. Two blanks so far in this game. Probably should have been a third blank last end with the flashed hit. Brendan Botch on his last rock. Flashed a hit, let Schneider make an open draw for two, and that, that's where we are here in the sixth end. Two center guards thrown by Tim Schneider. Lots of great uh, precision makes by Botcher. And in turn, Team Schneider just off the inch of this, even going the wrong way. Some heavy missing lights. Leads us to what we see now a wall of yellow. Mm, I wonder if Catlin thinks he can make three rocks move here. It'll be some big weight. Trying to make a lot of rocks fly. Catlin Schneider trying to bail his team out. Could be looking at the game here. Sterling does not like it. Floating outside. One and two. Will be Team Botcher line. Lots of ice, making sure that they're not playing with any kind of danger down the center line. Don't want to miss this draw on the line. Make sure he gives it to the sweepers here. Very successful end. Really precision made down the middle of the lineup set up that wall of yellow stones. Brennan Botcher, last rock in the sixth end, a draw for four. Line looks good. Sweeper's giving it some work. There it is. Four points on the board. Team Botcher roars back in this game. It is a 6-3 lead. Team Schneider will have a chance to respond with Hammer in this game when we come back. Here's another look at that beautiful rock from Kyla. Setting things up really nicely. They're close to the win with that one. Now in the last end of the game, Team Clybrink has a draw to the button for the win. I just made a call. They pay me way more cash than you guys ever will. If you want to destroy the sports books, come join the number one sports investing community on the planet at inplaylive.com. 
The reason we trust Western Sales with our business is the people. I'm sure that there's 100 years experience coming out of that shop. We trust them because we do a CMI on our, uh, on our combine, on our tractor. When our equipment comes out of Western Sales, it's going to be good because if it's not, they send us another combine, they send us another tractor. And we're not naive to the fact that that probably costs them a lot of money. So we just know that the service that we're getting at Western Sales is above par to everybody else. Sometimes curling just isn't as fun as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's play curling. Available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back. Seventh end it is not the last rocket. It is the third rocket at the end. Benny Heaves putting both... Both rocks in the top of the house. I mean, over curling a little bit here, not super, super important. But occupying the top of the house, that, that really did move. And, wow. Corner guard off the bat, Team Schneider. Alex Horvath. Very solid game. All right, I don't know if I... I don't know if I've seen a pure miss from him. Plays up a high corner guard. And now is going to perfectly place. Did that enter the rings? I don't think so. Yep. Outside of the rings. Two corner guards. That's going to be a perfect game for Alex Horvath early season here. Both leads playing a very, very uh, precise game. Brett has made some good shots, but early on, missed, missed light, especially on this first zone of his. I've been trying to keep my eye on it, see if it's a slow rock or anything like that. Could have just been a, a bit of a longer adjustment. Also could have dumped that stone off with Ben. In fact, that overcurl on, on Ben's second stone there leads me to believe that maybe that was a, a kind of a cutting rock. That's uh, That Brett convinced Ben to throw for him. Just a theory. That will occupy the draw path. That's a perfectly made shot by Brett. Now it's Jason Ginter's turn. Down three with Hammer, trying to make something big happen in the seventh end. Sterling indicates this rock is heavy. And yeah, that, that rock is not curling much yet, so. Got to put on the brakes. In the seventh end here, we might see the ice slow down a little bit. I definitely did notice some slower times last night. Game uh, McEwen. Who's McEwen playing? <laughs> on sheet one last night, the seventh end, and especially the eighth end, things did slow down. Sweepers got surprised by, by rocks kind of digging six to eight feet earlier than they thought. So keep our eye on that. One, two, three, four, five rocks down the sheet. It is peeling time. Oh, sorry, six rocks down the sheet. It's peeling time, last rock. But gets rid of a single single corner guard. That second guard of Alex Horvath came just a little bit deep. It's gonna make a run back attempt or a, a double attempt easier for Team Botcher. Pretty good looking angles though. That frozen red stone on the wing is in a very good spot. As you can see those those two yellow stones are gonna catch it no matter what way it goes. So definitely some angles, some opportunities here for Schneider. This one to slow down. Nah, touch deeper than they wanted, but that's a nice shot. Nice corner guard. Brennan cannot wait to put his broom down next to it. 
up three points. Very comfortable with what's happening right now. Team Watcher line two. It's Team Schneider that has the shots ahead of them. Brennan thinking to himself, let's just make the obvious shot. Give ourselves the best opportunity to get hammer back in the lead and we'll win it there. No need to try and steal the game here in the seventh. Just such pure motion from Mark He's seen it his whole career. Those hits cruising down the ice, right at the brim. Jeez, and that rock comes deep, no doubt about that. No doubt about that. Oh, that's what Team Shatter was looking for. Dealing with uh, dealing with a lost problem here. <laughs> Another deep stone. Interesting behind the behind the T line, so gets rid of that open Schneider stone. It's the safe call. It's the risk at first call. There we go. Situation rectified. Don't worry, people. <laughs> So some some stuff to work with here for Team Schneider. They're, they're looking okay actually. They've got some rocks to freeze too. No guards. There's one guard along the way. Definitely a lot of opportunity to make some freezes, some jams. And so multiple points still in play. Every member of Team Bot on the other end. And there's there's that ice changing a little bit. I think it, we saw it last night. Sweeper's a little bit surprised. I mean, sweepers were on that right away, so there's a good chance that Stilling just is not light. But ice is starting to slow down in the seventh pit. Got a watch party of about 500 here on YouTube. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. Thank you for supporting live curling streaming. The more of you tune in, the more sponsors are interested in supporting these events, the more the events can go forward. The more events these teams play, the more support they get. So thank you for building curling streaming in Canada and the world. It's because of because of all of you who choose to spend your weekends with us here watching Kumling, that we're able to add more and more cameras, more and more rings, more and more 
events and tournaments and teams. It's a beautiful thing. So thank you all for supporting live curling, curling stadium live. My name is Rory McCasker. And I am your camera operator, commentator, streamer. And we've had an excellent game this morning. A bit of mix of everything. Ends with a lot of made shots, with a lot of missed shots, open ends, some complex ones. Blank ends, scores, singles, deuces. This game is not at all. Brandon Botcher, first stone. Pretty big decision. Ignoring the red stones, choosing to draw or tap and guard his own. Not very easily removable, those red stones, so he's going to let. Schneider try to make some magic happen. Looking for a bit more curl. And he's going to get it. Taps that to the button area. Out what was called. So, tall order for Catlin Schneider. He's got to move some things around. He's got two red stones to come out. He's got three yellow stones in his way. Now, scoring two here is definitely an option. He could score two, try to steal in the last end. But just these curlers, they've played so much. They have so much experience. They know that if there's even a slight chance of getting three in this end, you got to take it. got to try and tie things up. It's worth the risk. Not many teams are going to go into the last end with one hammer and team watcher. Steal a point there and the extra end. It's just the numbers are not good. Very few teams uh, have been able to do that against the top tier teams, which uh, team watcher undoubtedly top tier team could be the best team in Kenya. That's always a fun debate, isn't it? <laughs> Just checking the chat down there. Got uh, Korean viewers. I always love to see those characters. Love, love knowing that this is a worldwide sport. Jan Van Gold, thank you for streaming. Thank you, Jan, for tuning in. Julia Lukosis, thanks for streaming this. Thanks for tuning in, Julia. Thanks for making a comment on the stream. This is, this is pretty much what we thought. Catlin's going to line up, how to make multiple yellows go away while retaining his two reds and leaving them in a position that's going to be difficult. Sound like a tall order? Well, it is. That's, that's what needs to happen at this point. You know, three points, two ends to play. <laughs> One end and two shots to play. But you can see the angles that he's lining up there. I think he's got something cooking. I think they're, they're talking about... They're talking about running back the, the red rock on the spot at an angle. Yeah, right where Cat was lining that up. They think the red back stone will cascade into the button forefoot area. He's thinking he can save his shooter by jamming it directly into the frozen rock set up at the edge of the eight foot. I I see the shot. It's there, it's thin, but I think you, you leave three rocks in play and uh, and make them difficult for a move. Playing this shot. This should be very interesting. Potential for the shot of the weekend right here. That one's able to make this, this move just the way he wants to. Get that Snapchat up. Oh, you can say that you want a, a great shot on Saturday afternoon on Curling Stadium Live. Make sure to tag Curling Zone on Twitter with your with your, um, highlight video post. And we'll we'll tweet that and make sure everyone everyone's exposed. 
Love this online sharing atmosphere. Catlin Schneider, first rock, seventh end. A big one here. Sweeper's on this the whole way. He's going to get this pick. Unfortunate. Comes it right through the hole. Not what they wanted. It's going to leave three botcher stones counting. And the dreams of scoring two or three getting, getting pretty out of reach now. She wasn't quite specific with that one. Catlin missing uh, missing two, missing his mark. Like two big weight hits at the sixth end as well. That team shatter knows that they have to be have to be better than they've been these last few ends if they want to beat a team like Brennan Botcher. Very solid first half of the game for Team Schneider. Fifth end, pretty solid as well. It was that sixth end where, where really the precision of the shots sort of fell off for Team Botcher. And uh, similarly, or sorry, sorry about that, Team Schneider, the precision of the shots fell off. Team Botcher responding by, by cranking up the ante a little bit, getting really specific with their placements of their stones as they made those soft weight taps and draws. Very much earned the score of four. Sixth end, Team Botcher did. And now with Brennan's last rock, he'll look to lie four, leave no shot for two. A okay with Team Schneider scoring one point here. They'd love to take a two point lead with Hammer into the last end. So here it is Brennan Botcher, last shot, seventh end. Looking to choke things off. Take control of the game here. And it will be a tight guard. Taking away, really, any opportunity for I mean, they'll take a look here. There might be some kind of thin triple. I don't know how you'd make that work. If you're shooter around. You'd have to just barely chip those first two stones. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that would work. Kevin Pertu, hello from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Turn on with the stream and commentary. Thank you, Kevin. I've had great experience with American curling. I've been down there a couple times. USA curling, very strong. Strong as it's ever been. Not sure what Catlin's lining up here. I don't know if there's a shot for two. Oh, we're going to find out, aren't we? This is Last Rock. Seventh end. Looks like just a shot for one. I think Catlin just preferred the out turn. And there it is. Point. Team Schneider keeps the game alive. It'll be Team Botcher with Hammer in the eighth end. Trying to solidify this win to go 3 0 with the Savile 2023. Turns. Greater peace of mind from pre seed to post harvest. You can count on the Victory Canola program to keep you and your farm ahead of the curve. Grow with us at VictoryCanola.com. The Roaring Game. We all love it, but sometimes curling just isn't as fun. 
as it can be on the Nintendo Switch. Don't get stuck in your curling club this year. Learn the game inside and out. Play for your favorite country and take the curling world by storm. With up to four players per console, you can enjoy curling with your friends and family anywhere, anytime. Let's Play Curling, available now only on Nintendo Switch. Welcome back to the Savile Center, Savile Community Sports Center complex. <laughs> to the Savile, Savile Shootout 2023. Our team Schneider, team Botcher. Team Botcher blowing this one open in the sixth end. Botcher's only scored in two ends this game, both times with Hammer. First the deuce in the third end, and then a big score of four in the sixth end. And historically throughout Brendan's career, we have seen some big points on the on the board with Hammer. One of the most dangerous teams. In certain years, the most dangerous team with Hammer. And they've shown us why today. It's been a great game for lead Alex. Alex Horvath, but uh, those two guards are a little close together. It's going to make a double kill easier. So a bit of a miss there for Alex. What's well, been a very solid game. Ben Hebert put his stones right where they need to be, right on the center line. One four, one top eight. That is textbook. Ah, a little jab from Craig Gallant there. Team having fun. Lots of smiles. Can't wait to see that. Both teams kind of have fun with each other. I think that's one of the one of the aspects of curling we all love the most is the camaraderie and kind of good nature of the game. Love to see that continue on and as things get really competitive. These teams playing for big money, big points, lots to lots to be competitive about, but you know, keeping that keeping that good uh, sports like attitude. That's what we love about curling so much. That is shot number five. So the bomb squad has arrived for Team Botcher. We will likely see big weight here on out. Brett Gallant's going to get the party started. Looks like a double peel attempt. Big weight just off nose, hoping to roll his shooter just a little bit to the right. Oh, no, they're going across the face. Oh. It's just, uh, I think that's just a miss. Just a miss from Brett. You can see the body language. Not happy with that one. Right. Still gets one guard out of the way. Up two points with hammer. That's good enough. Just avoiding disaster, Team Botcher at this point. Even if they just take one one rock off at a time, they'll still have a, an open hit and roll out to win the game. So that's, they have that math kind of baked into their brain. They know as long as they roll their shooter out and get rid of a red stone every shot, that's gonna be good enough for victory. A nice shot here around the guard, tap, tap. Exactly what the skipper called for. Great shot. Team Schneider doing what they have to do to occupy the center line. Move things around. Kept the jam stone in the back of the ranks. Looks like a single single peel here for Brett. Just like we talked about. Get rid of one stone at a time. Should do the trick for the Botcher. This time a straight sweep. And that shot is made. Perhaps a little thicker than they're hoping for, but no need to be picked. Right, it's done. On to the third stone. It's a lot of work to do for Team Shy. That was always, that was always the case, though. 
because they were forced in that seventh end, they knew it was going to be an uphill battle this eighth end. A lot of things have to go right, and a lot of things have to go wrong for Team Manager. Doing what they can, though, putting up another center guard. Probably want to leave that turn side open for another tap or promotion. Sweepers have indicated this is tough. You always know it's, it's heavy with the body language of the sweepers, kind of uh, the trail behind the rock. It's, it's funny how tough to fight your emotions, even as a sweeper. You know that you should be right with that stone in case your, your skip has a plan B, but you just can't help yourself really back off that rock. Kind of try to pull it backwards with you as your body <laughs> trails the stone. That's an emotional game. Nothing wrong with that. Mark Kennedy's turn. To make a single rock deal. Chips that one out just as planned. Looks like they're coming right in. Time for guards is coming past. King Schneider knows they have to make it eventually. Why not right now? Draw around the overlap. And they do just chip off the top. We've seen that. We've seen that a lot in the past, uh, from the sixth end on. Team Schneider just not quite able to manage the pass. Little chip here, a little hole there. Opening the door for Team Bob. Many opportunities now. Here's the good news. Three rocks in the rings. Angles are looking quite good at the top of the house for Team Schneider. There is a good chance they're going to make uh, Brennan throw his last rock. It's got to just be the goal. Make Brennan throw his last rock. They did get a flat hit earlier in the game. The fifth end, they got a totally flashed hit. We, we don't know if that was a hit rock or whether he just threw that, but... Either way, down two without hammer, your, your, best, your best hope is lying to make sure that, that Brennan has to do something to get rid of them. And uh, Team Schneider's on their way to do that. There's a lot of good angles. Roger's going to accept that if he wants to get Red Ring, or Red Rocks out of the ring, he is going to have to lose this, this yellow stone, which is quite good positioning. This call could be chip on the middle red that looks like we have here mark kennedy attempting to just poke that stone out let's see if he can get it wow he does rearranges those angles that was exactly the call pretty brave call he misses outside there he chips his own yellow out he misses inside he gets the top red which is not as ideal Schneider still got a chance here. Bit of a discussion here, how to best hide their red stones, force Team Botch to throw that last rock, as we had discussed. Here's an opportunity to lie to right here. Sterling and Catlin just trying to decide what their best chances of this at Team Botcher will be. They know Team Botcher will have some kind of fairly open shot to remove the red stone. Just want to make sure they're creating as many freezes and angular opportunities.
I'm just seeing some activity in the chat there. Thanks for participating in the stream. This makes YouTube and, and streaming online so beautiful. You can scream at your TV all you want. I can't hear you. I can hear you. There's something in this chat. And so can everybody else. It's actually a really fun environment when people uh, are chiming in, commenting on shots, talking about strategy, tactics, what may have went wrong with a certain shot. A couple times we've we've caught um, we've caught some some interesting things in the end. We we caught a, a free guard zone violation that neither team was able to catch up catch on the ice. There's there's a lot of interesting things that come up in the chat. So love it when when I see participation down there. Thanks so much for for uh, for mentioning your comments to that chat on YouTube. Looks like Catlin and Sterling have come to a decision. Roll. They're, they're red. This also could be a straight half back creating a frozen back, back yellow stone. We're going to find out. I don't know exactly what the conclusion was. This one's going to over curl and light. Angles are still quite good. I don't know if Team Botcher can really just get rid of all of these. But definitely not the call for Team Shutter. Looks like they are going to take on some kind of double, get these Red Rocks moving. Still not a, a perfect scenario for Team Botcher. Definitely not a scary situation, but it looks like Brenton is going to have to make something on his last one. Big way. Make some stuff fly here. Put the curl a touch more. He'll get one. He'll get two. <laughs> Backwards through the hole. <laughs> Might not have been exactly how they drew that one up, but they get away with it. It'll be a uh, hit and roll and for, for Team Schneider. And Brennan has set himself up for a, a routine shot. Win. There's nowhere to hide here. Catlin must remove that yellow stone or at least pop into the back eight or back 12. Team Shotter must lie to you at the end of the shot or it will be handshake. So that forces their hand. Nice, easy hit weight. It shifts his own. Just a little lazy with that speed. 
the writing was on the wall. I think Team Shatter knew that their chances of winning this game were very slim. Just didn't quite finish that one off. The sleepers needed to force Brennan to throw his last rock. It will be a comeback victory. Brennan Botcher did not lead until the sixth end. Oh, my mistake. It was a two to one, one game, but that's, that big sixth end seemed to be the story in this one. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will catch you next draw here at the Scottish Show 2023. My name is Rory McCusker. This has been a blast. We'll see you next time. The reason we trust Western Sales with our business is the people. I'm sure that there's 100 years experience coming out of that shop. We trust them because we do a CMI on our, uh, on our combine, on our tractor. When our equipment comes out of Western Sales, it's going to be good because if it's not, they send us another combine, they send us another tractor. And we're not naive to the fact that that probably costs them a lot of money. So we just know that the service that we're getting at Western Sales is above par to everybody else. Here's another look at that beautiful rock from Kyla. Setting things up really nicely. They're close to the win with that one. Now in the last end of the game, Team Clybrink has a draw to the button for the win. Oh, hold on, the guys I didn't pull, I just made a call. They made me way more cash than you guys ever will. If you want to destroy the sports books, come join the number one sports investing community on the planet at inplaylive.com. Imagine being able to stream every curling game from every sheet from any event, be it your Wednesday league game, bond spiel, or corporate event. Curling Stadium offers an all-inclusive streaming solution featuring high-quality cameras, ease of use, great reliability, and minimal installation. Offering your sponsors customizable ad space on your streamed curling games and being able to sell video packages to your corporate events for increased revenue. With Curling Stadium, you can stream to any device, be it your mobile phone, tablet, or computer. Push the feed to your desired platform, be it Facebook, YouTube, or any other social media. Curling Stadium is simply the way forward. Where it's commonplace in other sports to televise every game, we want to do the same. Curling is a global sport, and it's time it gets the coverage it needs. Make your curling club the next Curling Stadium.